Now available in paperback and Kindle Unlimited, John Haynes, A Conversation with Death. The man who rules the world and the angel of darkness take on a horde of demons in this inaugural John Haynes series adventure. Get John Haynes, A Conversation with Death for 99 cents on Kindle or in paperback today. I was reading several comic books online, and as I took a critical look at many of these comics I was reading online, I began to understand why many of these comics just don't sell. Now, when it comes down to comics, comics are supposed to be a visual medium. But I didn't see anything visually compelling in many of these comics that would give me an incentive to go pick this comic book up off the shelf, take a look at it, or even have more of an incentive to go and buy it. Now, when I took a look at these comics, the first thing that really annoyed me was the cover. A lot of these comics that I'm seeing today, they don't have any action on the cover. Oftentimes when you have these covers these days, you have people posed, but the poses that they're in just don't tell you a compelling story. Part of selling a comic is having an image on that cover that compels the reader to, to ask a question. What's going on in this book? And why should I go and pick this book up? If you have a very compelling cover for your book, that's going to draw the reader's eyes to your book, and then they're going to want to pull that book off the shelf. Or if they're online, what they're going to want to do is start clicking the previews to start reading that book. That's one of the reasons why I would go out and hire an artist like a Bill Walko or a Mike Williams to design the covers for my books and the SJS Direct imprint is because I want those readers, when they take a look at an ISIS series cover or an E-Steam series cover, to see that image on the cover and then be compelled to look inside if they're on Amazon.com or if I were ever to do a show, be able to look at that book and then get their attention almost immediately. But when I look at many of these Marvel covers or these DC covers or these Image or Dynamite covers, they aren't very compelling. There's no action going on. There's no compelling story getting your attention. And that's not giving that reader, again, that incentive to grab that book off the shelf. Now, when even if people do grab these books off the shelf, from what I looked at online, there's nothing there that really compels you when you open the first page. And one of the things that annoys me about a lot of first pages in comics these days is the fact that I'm seeing prose on a comic book page. There should be no prose on a comic book page. This is a comic book. This is a visual medium. We don't have big blocks of words on an opening page of a comic. A comic book should have a big splash page. And that's something that I see that's really missing from a lot of comics these days is the splash page. Now, the splash page is a very important page because this is the first page that the reader is looking at when they open the book. And as the first page that they're reading, they're looking at when they open the book, this page really needs to get the reader's attention. A good splash page shows you the hero or the main character in action doing their thing. That's all you'd have on the first page as a splash. Something where this character is in action because it's action that defines a comic book character. We need to see that character in action even though there might be a caption here or there or a thought balloon. There needs to be that character as the center focus of that book when the reader first opens that book because it's that splash page that's going to be the reader's first impression and it's that splash page that's going to get the reader turning pages because that's what you want the reader to do with the comic book. You want them to turn pages. You want them to see that splash page, see that action on that splash page, and then turn to the second page and start reading the story. And I was reading one of these comics 
It was Dynamite's Nancy Drew, and it was really sad to look at this comic book because it opens up, and then we don't, instead of a splash page, we have these panels, and the panels really don't do a good job of telling a story. I looked at that book, and I just shook my head because it didn't set the story up properly. You had your Kelly Thompson, she did this story, and she took seven pages to open up this Nancy Drew number one. And I looked at it, I said, seven pages is one third of this comic book, and you haven't introduced this main character in an effective way. A good comic book opens up with the splash page, and by the third page, we are into the story, because comic book storytelling is condensed. It's extremely condensed. It's different from screenwriting, and it's different from novel writing. In novel writing, you can have a bunch of prose to introduce some a concept. And in screenwriting, you can have an opening scene with an inciting incident. But with a comic book, the inciting incident has to be on the splash page. And then we go into the action. And we have to get into that action by that third page. Because it's that third page that is the make or break for a comic. If you do not have the reader's attention by the third page, you have lost the reader primarily, and they're not going to buy the book. If you get them by the third page, they'll turn to the fifth page, and once they get to the fifth or sixth page, they're one-third into the book, and once they get one-third into the book, their chances are they're going to finish the other two-thirds of a book. And this is something many people just don't understand about comic books. Comic books are a book that has to be held in people's hands, they have to be able to use their hands, and they have to be able to turn pages with their hands. And if you're not writing a story that compels the reader to keep turning pages, then you're not going to get the sale. And what I saw in many of these comics was, again, that bad cover that doesn't make me want to take it off the shelf. I saw that, that opening page, which was filled with prose, or I saw pages with panels and no splash page. And all of these things are things that prevent the, a lot of these books from selling because there is a structure to comics and there is a structure that people have to understand how it works. The stru you can wrap a form around the structure and tell a compelling story, but you have to understand how this structure works. And when I look at a lot of these modern comics, it's clear to me that a lot of people don't understand how these structures work as to creating compelling storytelling in the visual medium of comic books because your pictures have to be strong. Your pictures have to be strong on the cover and your pictures have to be strong on the opening page and your pictures also have to be strong as you're telling your story. And one of the things that I'm seeing with a lot of comics is there are problems as related to transitioning from panel to panel. And the reason why there's a lot of problems from related to transitioning from panel to panel is because the writers really have not really thought out the story. So they'll have an idea of something as related to things that they see in their head from their imagination, but they haven't come up with an understanding of how to translate that into single visual images. And because they have not come up with an idea on how to translate that into a single image, that's what makes it hard for the reader to see how the action moves from panel to panel. Because I was looking in some other comics that were online, like I was looking at Ms. Marvel, and I looked at several issues of Ms. Marvel, and I saw some comic panels that really did not tran transition very well. And that was due to them trying to go with this sort of YA style writing, but that right type of writing really does not work in comics. Again, comics have a completely different style and approach to writing than either young adult novels or screenplays, but many people, they take it for granted and they believe that you can use a YA writer to write comic books, but you have to know how to write comic books overall. When I look at something like when I was looking at uh, X-23 um, issue, and again, I saw the transition issues and 
I saw how the panels were not flowing from one to the other because Mariko Tamaki does not do a good job of transitioning from panel to panel as related to action. And I also look at a lot of the characterizations and they were completely off. And this is another problem as related to many comic pros. A lot of them, again, today really just don't understand how the medium works, how the story models work, or how to approach stories as related to comics. When you're doing comics, again, you really have to have strong visuals because you're telling a story with pictures. And when I see, again, comics where you have these big blocks of prose or these big blocks of dialogue, that doesn't really make for compelling storytelling. Yes, you need dialogue to move the story forward and tell us about the characters, but you have to keep that dialogue to a minimum. The star of a comic is visual images, and a good writer understands that they have to be able to write strong images that the, that the artist can draw so that they, the pictures can move the story forward. And when I looked at that Nancy Drew issue, I saw big problems as related to the transitions in several scenes, and I also saw problems as related overall to the book. I mean, seven pages to open up a first issue before we get to the story, that's not something you want to see in a first issue. A first issue should be something that really leaves a powerful impression on the reader because the first issue is going to be the first book in the reader's hands. And as the first book in the reader's hands, this is the book that's going to build the momentum that moves the series and continues to give the reader incentive to buy more books. And if you don't do that, what's going to happen is they're going to stop at number one and then they're going to move on. And when every comic you have to understand, whether it be a first issue or a last issue or a middle issue is that each of those books is going to be the book that builds momentum forwards or it's going to build momentum backwards because with that book that's in the reader's hands that's the book that has to leave a powerful impression on the reader when they have that re book in their hands what they have to what that book has to do is leave such a strong impression on them that they want to either go out and buy back issues or they want to go out and buy the next issue. That's what a quality comic does, but when I look at a lot of comics today, they don't really do a great job of compelling you to go out here and buy more books. I was also looking at Black AF, and that was just one of the worst books I ever sat down to read. And... It was bad because the art was really off in many pages and the storytelling was uneven in many pages. I didn't really get to see good, again, good transitions from panel to panel. I didn't get to see strong dialogue and I didn't get to see, you know, a good setup in less than three pages. This was another book that took a long time to set up and you really, again, don't want to do that. A lot of writers, they're thinking that this is like writing a novel, but the novel has evolved. As a guy who has written novels, I understand that novels have to compete with screenplays, they have to compete with TV shows, compete with movies, compete with other forms of media, so I have to get right into the story. When I write a novel like a Spinsterella or a Spellbound or a Temptation of John Haynes, I often take approaches I learned from old school comics like the splash page and I try to get the reader in almost immediately so I usually try to have a chapter that's three to five pages and at the most these days is three pages because I want to get that reader into the story as soon as possible when it comes down to comics I'm seeing people going seven five to seven pages and that's not what you want to do if a novelist like myself is bringing things down to three pages that means you as a comic book pro really need to do this in three pages as well because that's where people are going to start your book and you want to keep them reading, you want to keep them turning those pages because the more pages they turn, 
the more incentive they have to go out and buy this book. If they don't have that incentive to buy, to turn the pages, you're not going to get the sale. And when you're on platforms like online these days, like Amazon or Smashwords, people are looking at digital pages and their attention is shorter than that of someone in a bookstore. So you have to work twice as hard to get their attention and your material has to be far more compelling in order to get that sale. So you have to come in very quickly in that three pages, leave that impression on the reader, and that's what's going to get them to go pick up the digital version or order the paperback version and buy it and read it themselves. That's all, that's all part of it. But many of the comic pros, they're thinking that this is like YA, or they're thinking that they can just go and have all this exposition, but that's not going to make you have a competitive comic book. A comic book, again, as a visual medium, you have to make your impression on that reader with that strong cover, a strong splash page, and a compelling story that goes, that moves the action from panel to panel to the point where the people who are reading this comic feel like this comic is moving, feel like these characters are animated, feel like things are dynamic, because if they feel like things are animated and dynamic, they're going to read all the way to the end, and then they're going to want to anticipate picking up that next issue, and, picking up, and anticipate picking up back issues if this isn't the first issue in their hands. I'm seeing so many mistakes in today's comics, and it's these mistakes that I'm seeing in these comics that show me why the comic book industry is having such a hard time selling comics, because it's clear to me that many of the people working in the comic book industry today just don't understand the craft of storytelling as related to comics, and they don't understand the foundations of the story model as related to comics the model and approaches to comics, and they don't understand that this is not a book where you're writing with words. This is a medium where you tell stories with pictures, and if you can't tell your story with pictures effectively, then you're not going to effectively engage the reader, and if you don't engage the reader, you're just not going to get the sales. I, the way I see it, we really need to have some somebody in editorial trying to mentor some of these people because when I look at the work that they have on the page it's not very strong it's not very compelling and it's not giving anyone an incentive to spend more money on more comics because with comics costing three ninety nine for thirty two pages that same customer can put another four dollars with their money and get a Netflix subscription where they can watch all the TV shows and movies that they want, or they can go to a place like Kindle or Smashwords and pick up one of the books like my SJS Direct publications and get the more entertainment value for their dollar than they would reading that 32-page comic. If you want to try some of my SJS Direct publications like the ISIS series, the East Eam series, the Temptation of John Haynes, the John Haynes series, the Spinsterella trilogy, or my Men's Issues books, you may do so by clicking the link to Amazon.com in the description box. And if you want to help me make more videos like this, you can donate to my Patreon by clicking the link in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and Kindle Unlimited, Isis, Escape from Transylvania. The goddess next door and John Haynes must escape a horde of vampires from a hunt in this horror-filled Isis series adventure. Get Isis, Escape from Transylvania in paperback and Kindle Unlimited today.